welcome to BizJet TV, my name is Robert Sapoli and today we've got a special episode centred on and focused on the subject of health. Healthy travel, yes. We're going to be talking about healthy travel because lots of talk about the coronavirus, lots of scaremongering out there today with the media and the governments and whatever telling us all to stay home and lock down and this, that, the other. Um, and no one is really talking about what we need to do to stay healthy, about from telling us to wash our hands every five minutes um, and, and practice social distancing. Well, there's a lot of other things that we can do and today I've got a special guest that inspired my wife and I to improve our health and write this book, Health for Flies, which if you, if you haven't got a copy, you can get a copy off Amazon. I'll post the link below. A uh, great book about exactly what we're talking about today. As you can see, there's illustrations in there. It's an easy read, a quick read. Um, it's been endorsed by a number of aviation professionals and health professionals uh, at the front here. Um, and uh, so great great resource but today we're going to be talking to marcus rothkrantz in las vegas marcus is a modern day leonardo da vinci he's a filmmaker he's an architect he's a designer and he's also a natural health expert and he got into natural health because he had some health problems in his 20s and he turned it around and on, in this episode marcus is going to be sharing his story and giving us some practical solutions so that we can stay healthy too. He's also written this great book here, Free Food and Medicine, a number of other books he's going to be talking to us about. And he's got his own product line as well, of health, health products, which I highly recommend. I use myself. Um, and I, they are very, very exceptional. And Marcus will be telling us a bit about how he got into that too. So uh, enough from me. If you haven't subscribed to Bizjet TV, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. And now let's virtually travel over to Las Vegas and meet with Marcus. Off we go. Okay, so here we are. Okay, Marcus, so welcome to BizJet TV. And uh, so let's start off here with, um, tell us a bit about when you travel by private jet, how that's benefited you from a business standpoint. Uh, well, you get there faster. There's less airport annoyance. I mean, I, just, I think everybody knows the obvious reasons. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It, it's just, uh, it's smaller, faster, lighter, less hassle. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about a, an example of when you when you showed by private jet and how where you went and 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 how it, it, it eliminated a lot of hassle than if you'd gone by normal air, airlines. Well, normally in the past, the, the most of the times I was at, I mean, I didn't even pay for it. It was I was flown to like by the company I was working for, which is IGT. Um, they had a what was that? It was like the Ferrari jet, the one that oh, has yeah. The, the Piaggio 180. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. With the, it's noisy as hell. You can hear it coming from like six miles away. Yeah. But yeah, that thing was great. And, uh, you know, you just walk onto the private, into the, you just park your car, walk through the building, walk on the plane and you're on your way. There's no security, no nothing. I mean, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's like that now, but I mean, it, it was great. And you get there like right away and. You just walk off the plane into your your car, and I mean you're saving two hours each each way. Yeah, very true, very true. Now, as a health expert, tell us about what you do when you're traveling to stay healthy, because there's a lot of talk now. You know, people can't travel, coronavirus, this, that, the other. Um, people are are looking more into well, how do I stay healthy when I'm on the road? Because if I'm at home and confined to my home, it's easier to control the environment. But when I'm out, especially going through airports and on airplanes and whatnot, uh, what do you do? Well, I don't do anything different. I mean, it, the environment that you control is your body. Mm -hmm. And if it's working right and it's clean and it's functioning properly, you can handle just about anything. I don't worry. I love airports. I don't worry about public places. I I'm bummed. I mean, I like, I love airports. I, I that's my, my home. And, uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not scared of lots of people being around me because I know I'm fine. My, I mean, my immune system can handle just about anything. Yeah. Most people though, they can't because they eat garbage. You know, it's all bread and, and pasta and cookies and cakes and dairy products and sugar and everything that's baked to death in an oven and, and processed dead food. That's just, chemicals and sugar and dairy i mean 
And then they wonder why they get sick. They wonder why, you know, disease, germs, viruses, they, they can only really exist in a body that's not healthy. That, you know, uh, those, those are opportunistic predators. And they live off, just like lions and, you know, animals in the wild, they feed off the sick and dying, weak and the old in the herds that they pick off. Mm-hmm. You know, after the, and that's how nature keeps things in check. So it's the same way. We have some lions and tigers coming after us. They're a little, they're about this big, yeah. but they're picking off the weak, the dead, the, 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 the sick, the dying, the, the unhealthy ones, the old ones. And it, it, I know it's like, what if that was your family member? I know I get it. But the point is mm-hmm. you can't change people. If they're going to eat that way, they're going to smoke and drink and eat bad dead food. I mean, there's people that, that are old that are really healthy because they, they control themselves. Yeah. But most, most people are into comfort and instant gratification. So they eat things that make them feel good right away for the next 10 minutes, but they don't care what it does to them two hours from now or, you know, but I don't do that. I, I, I eat foods that are found in nature. And when I travel, I mean, I just try to find things that are, and I'm actually so clean and healthy that I can eat you know, uh, you know, some airport food once in a while and not be bothered by it because I can handle it. Yeah. But if you do it all the time, if you're constantly eating that crap, then yeah, you're not going to have any chance to recuperate or, or be strong. So, I mean, there's viruses everywhere. There's bacteria and germs everywhere. Every surface, every it's in the air. I mean, mm-hmm. you're always exposed to it all the time. Mm-hmm. This isn't like a new thing. Yeah. So, so... The, the, the world is overreacting. I mean, uh, like, you know, what, how many people have died? 40,000 people or something? Like, okay, well, 50,000 people have died this week alone from the normal flu. Yeah. You know, a million people have died since January from pneumonia. Yeah. But they don't make a big deal out of that because it's already all over the world. It's old news. It, it, you can't, you know, this is something new that they're all freaked out about and, and they're trying to stop it. You can't stop it. You can't stop something that's the size of a, of a, a pin dot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. ridiculous. I mean, the only thing you can do is be healthy and, and take care of yourself and make sure your immune system's working right. And it's really nothing to worry about if your soldiers are ready to fight. Yeah, and I, and I wish that the, the media and the governments were to talk about real health and tell people to get healthy and build their immune system instead of scaring everybody, uh, which is which is ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I you agree. were you were very sick in your late twenties, and then you you changed oh, the way yeah. you ate. You started to look into herbalism and that. Can you tell us a bit about that and 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 what made yeah, you change I, and, and and what happened to 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 your body? I always wanted to be the good little boy. I never drank. I never smoked. I never did drugs. I never even drank coffee. You know, no alcohol. I I. I I just wanted to do the right thing. But yet by the time I was in my 20s, I was dying, literally. My doctor said, your heart's about to give out. I was bleeding when I went to the bathroom. I had glasses like thicker than my finger. Um, it was terrible. And I didn't know what it was. And, and I had asthma and allergies. I, I had bronchitis like four times a year. I whistled when I was breathing. My lungs were half filled with fluid. My heart was given out. I didn't know it because I was eating just bread and, and ice cream and hamburgers and cheese and milk and, you know, the typical stuff. I mean, yeah. what, what are the three basic staples in the modern world? Uh, wheat, flour, and sugar, and milk, right? I yeah. mean, that, and that's, that's not something you find in nature. I mean, milk is not something, unless it's human milk, you're not supposed to drink something from an animal that's supposed to be too, you know, that, that's not even the same Thing that we are yeah yeah exactly uh anyway so at, when i when i i mean i i got so bad that i just gave up and i just started over i said okay i, I, I know an apple score for me i know you know just you know basic fruit and vegetables are good for me i know greens are good for me so i just started eating basic stuff and drinking water and then i found a book on juicing not fruit juice, but vegetable juice, yeah. you know, and because there's a difference. People think fruit juice is, is okay. Well, you're concentrating sugars, and now you're getting into other, because sugar is the main fuel source for pathogens, and, you know, people are always going for the comfort stuff, the instant gratification. They think that 
They're healthy because they drink fruit juice. Well, orange juice, one glass of orange juice has as much sugar as a Coca-Cola. Yeah. You know, the fibers turn out. The fibers will keep the sugar in control from raising your blood uh, your blood sugar and, and your and insulin and stuff like that. So, you know, people keep looking for shortcuts, ways to have that good taste, the instant gratification, the quick fix, and not change their ways. Mm-hmm. You know, they think that there's some magic drugs, some magic something that they, they can just take to make their problems go away. But yet they keep drinking and smoking and eating the bad foods and doing all the things that are bad for them. Having a stressful lifestyle, being in a bad relationship, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it, all the things that are bad for you, they, they, they don't stop that. They just think they can take something and make all that go away. The problem, the symptoms, you know. Yeah, and then and then they claim it's their victim mentality, like oh, it's genetics, uh, it's not my fault, it's just something that's going around, and I'm just a victim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, 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 so you change the way you ate. You, you you started to clean up your system, build your immune system, get really healthy, um, and then you you developed your own products. Tell us a bit about your your, your products, uh, which which I've I've taken in the past and I, I still take today. I think they're very, very good. Um, and tell us a bit about that journey and, and, and that side of you and, and, and also as a business and, and how it does and what it does for people, of course. Well, it started as me just experimenting. I just wanted to know what I, I was so into. I lost a girlfriend because of health. I mean, she was deteriorating right in front of my eyes. And and, and I didn't want – and I, I realized this is happening all over the world. Everybody's losing a loved one somehow to some disease. You know, I lost my dad because – you know, he, he, it was, so I, I just wanted to figure out what worked and I used myself as the guy to experiment on and I, I knew like my health needed improving. So I took, you know, it was years of research on oh, this works, this doesn't, this yeah. works, this doesn't. So I had two lists, do this, but don't do that, you know, uh-huh. and, then, and both lists just started growing and I realized that things that were on the to-do list were just natural things you find in nature. Like, you know, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, things like that, uh-huh. and not things that are made in a factory or an oven or a stove or things that are you know, that are baked to death in an oven or that, that are made in a, that you buy in a box or a bag or a jar or a can. Yeah. Uh, and that the, uh, the minute you pick something from a tree or a bush, it starts dying, it starts oxidizing. And most of the, within one hour, half the vitamins are already gone. Uh, so I started learning about powdering and drying that, see, the, most of the stuff you buy in the uh, grocery store is, they call it fresh fruits and vegetables. Well, it was picked two weeks ago, probably, you know, and it was picked unripe. And so plants don't get most of their vitamins until the very last moment when they're actually ripe. When you, if you pick it unripe, it doesn't have the vitamins, it doesn't have a lot of the stuff that you need for your health. And it doesn't even taste that good. And that's, there's a reason for that. The plant doesn't want you to pick it yet because it's not ready. That's why ripe fruit tastes so good and unripe fruit is like there's no flavor or taste at all. Mm-hmm. And that's why the stuff you buy in a store has no flavor or taste because it was picked unripe. And then they spray it with this stuff to make it look good. And, you know, um, but, and then when you pick it, moisture is an oxidant. So there's moisture in the oranges and the fruits and the, that. So not only is the air oxidizing it, but the moisture inside there is also oxidizing it. So by the time you get it and then you sit it on the shelf or in the stove in your fridge for you know days or a week, it, it's just this is by the time you eat it, there's very little nutrition value left. Mm-hmm. But if you were to pick the thing and instantly dry it, like in a dehydrator, mm-hmm. uh, you're you're locking in the minerals, the vitamins, and the enzymes. Mm-hmm. And then you can, you know, powder it, and then it'll last five years. And that's yeah. why I do the powder thing because it actually is. Or you, or you, or you could freeze it. You know, a lot of the stuff you buy in the freezer section, the frozen fruits and vegetables, yeah. stuff like that, those are actually better for you be, than the fresh ones because the frozen stuff is actually picked ripe. Yeah. And then they they freeze it right away. In the freezing process, you might lose about 15% nutrition value, but still, it's got more vitamins and stuff than the, the, the stuff that's not frozen. So for me, it's it, the frozen and the powdered are actually better for you, I found from my research, than the stuff you buy in the produce section. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I started developing my own products and things that were just for me, just to see, yeah. you know, I just wanted to be, 
I grew up watching a six million dollar man. You know, for me, yeah. I wanted to be like me that. Too. I wanted yeah. to be able to run sixty miles Stay an awesome. hour, yeah. do yeah. hop over buildings and things like that. So I wanted to be like the the superhero, and yeah. I, and I I just I looked around and I saw these unhealthy people and I said I don't want to be like that. Yeah. So I did years and years of experimenting on myself with. You know, real, and I learned about herbal the plants and what they do, and I realized a lot of the plants that are just what we call weeds are actually more powerful than the stuff you buy in the produce section. Yeah, for lots of reasons. We, weeds don't get watered, so they have to. They're survivors. They're stronger. They grow deeper roots. They pull in more nutrients from the ground than the wimpy plants that are grown in the in the farm soil, which only has NPK. It only has three new three minerals versus the stuff that grows in wherever it can an opportunistic plant. Um, so I developed all these formulas over years and years of, of stuff and I just made them better and better and stronger and and, uh, and then I started sharing them with friends and relatives and they're, they all improved and then they said you should sell this stuff. So I don't make a lot of money on it, I just make it because I want to help people and I put it out there, I add 15% to what it costs me because it's got to pay for the fulfillment and the shipping and the, you know, the warehouse and all that. Yeah. But uh, but you know, I just want I just want to know what is the most powerful stuff you can take, and that's why I make this. It's not cheap because most people they have a lot of filler in their products, and yeah, you know, that's why I realize I got to make my own because most of the stuff that you buy out there, it's all about money, it's all about business, it's all about making a profit. So let's put. 75% filler like rice powder or something yeah. in there. I only yeah. put a few little herbs in there. Because yeah. these herbs, they have to, they have to pay someone to pick these and dry them and you uh -huh. know, have testing done and all that. Yeah. That costs a lot of money. So if you add all that, that up, it's not a cheap thing when you're mixing 12 to 40 different herbs together that were hand-picked and cross, you know, dry and, and all that. Um, so... It's like it's like the Rolls Royce. It's like the Ferrari. It's like the you know uh -huh. the Lamborghini of of, of, of herbs. Is yeah. is that's why it's not cheap? Because if you want to do it right, you know you got to put some effort and work into it. And and, and yeah, that, that's very true. When you pick up anything in a health food store and you read the labels, uh, a lot of the times the the labels the stuff that's written on the labels is like language you can't understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, there's a lot of stuff they can tell you. Like you, you're allowed to mix in a certain percentage of maltodextrin, which is a anti-caking agent preservative, yeah. without actually having it on the label. And it tastes sweet. It's a type of sugar. So they mix it in there, and they don't even have to put it on the label. And a lot of the stuff that I buy, I said, why does this taste so sweet? Yeah. And it doesn't say on the label. And I said, oh, there's maltodextrin in there. And after a while, you start to recognize the taste. And most of the people, they buy stuff because it tastes good, not because of what it does for you. They buy it because, they, well, should I buy this brand or this brand? Well, this one tastes better, so I'm buying this one. Yeah. And they don't realize that, like, it's like the protein powders out nowadays, half the bottle is sugar. Yeah. Half the bottle is, is just stuff that makes it taste good, and only this much is the actual product. Yeah, and tell us they, about your, your cookbook, because obviously uh, supplements are important, but... Uh, and as you're saying, food needs to taste good. So what right. you and, and, and Cara have done, your, 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 your fiance, you've basically gone to work and produced this cookbook with lots of interesting recipes that people can do at home. And, yeah. uh, and, and I think that's really, really interesting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, tell us yeah. a bit about what, what's in there, what, what juicy recipes are in there, maybe your, your, your favorite ones that are in there. Uh, this is a... Um... This is what we eat. I just made a book about it. Uh, it's, it's. We wanted to show people that. See, people think eating healthy is boring. That you're lacking something. That you're going to be like having to not do the foods anymore that you love doing. So I made a book, and so Kara and I figured out a way to make all the stuff that we grew up with, that we crave, that we love, that most people are used to: pizza, pasta, creme brulee. You know, cookies, cake, chocolate cake, milkshakes, uh, candied apples. I mean, you name it. We figured out ways to make healthy versions of that and not using any type of uh, oven or stove. You can use it. You can heat stuff up. People think oh, that's another misconception. People think it's it's cold. All the food is cold. It's not. You can heat it up to 118, 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 45 Celsius, without killing the enzymes. Or the minerals or the vitamins or things like uh, the vitamins. You can't kill minerals, but yeah. vitamins. Yeah. Um, 
And so your food still has the life force in it. So you can have warm food if you want. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's the first thing. You, you just don't kill it with high heat. And so anyway, so we made all these uh, versions of all that stuff, lasagna and, you know, pasta with cream sauce. Yeah, and we make that too, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and even Pop-Tart. Yeah. I grew up with Pop-Tarts. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, – because that really – I mean, I found it as we've transitioned to this type of lifestyle that, you know, the, the key is in the recipes. If you can make tasty recipes – then you eliminate the, 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 the urge to go out and, and, and eat the rubbishy stuff. Um, right. And I think that really, really is, is, is the key there. Um, so, on the, so really, at the end of the day, it's not so much what you do on the road, but when you, what you do when you're at home so you can build a strong immune system, a strong body, so that when you are on the road and you eat something that you're not supposed to eat, your body can cope. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and um, of course, you got to move your body, which... Yeah all the time. And, and I think one of the big ones also is, I, you know, cause you hear examples from people say, well, I know so-and-so lived till 120 and they, they smoked and they drank and yeah. ate bad food. And you hear about that. And there are a number of people that are like that. And I go, yeah, because that's another part of health. It's not just what you eat. It's also your, your, your stress. Are you happy with life? Are you happy doing what you're doing? Are you in a good relationship? Are you, or are you in a job you hate? Are you in a relationship that's draining your life force? You know, the people that lived long lives, they had a peaceful, calm life. They liked their life. They were content. They were happy. They were at peace. There was no stress. So food is a part of it. But the other part is the energy of the world around you. Are you happy with your life? And, um, you know, the, the, the whole thing about flying and, and vacationing and uh, for me, that I love that. I like traveling. I like being on exotic beaches and traveling the world. And that, to me, is stress relief. You know, yeah. I get my best. I get my best ideas when I'm sitting in a restaurant or at an airport or when I'm not home. I'm not at work. I'm just you know sitting in a public place with my laptop and I I'm just away and like somewhere else in the world. You know, I could be walking through Germany or Italy or on a beach in Tahiti. Yeah. That's that's my that's my best stuff comes to me and I'm inspired and I feel good and I don't it's like you know and, and so that's a big part of of health is being free to travel and be yourself and not be stuck in an office with a you know doing you know yeah <laughs> yeah exactly exactly Marcus is there anything uh, in closing is there anything you any message you'd like to send to everybody um, but before you give us the message uh, what's what are you working on right now that's that's new that's maybe going to come out in the next few months is there anything new you're working on health wise that maybe people should start to look out for uh well i mean it's, it's more the same i'm just doing more videos to help educate and inspire people on yep. youtube yeah on my my channel is the healthy click the link. Life. yeah we'll put the link below here yeah the the, the healthy life.com um and uh I'm waiting for this stupid band to lift so I can start traveling again. It's, it's well, same here, you know, same here. <laughs> and and uh, you know, people just just need to. I mean, I have my free book, Heal Yourself 101, which they can download for free as an ebook, and it just walks you through all the steps: what to stop doing, what how to cleanse out the mess you've created, uh -huh. physically, mentally, emotionally, and has recipe examples and then it tells you how to clean out your body and start doing the right thing. It walks you through the fasting, the water, the juicing, the, the smoothies, the raw food and all. It gives you, you know, um, and that's what people should do. Just go through that. You have to cleanse out the mess that you created. Get rid of the negative stuff in your life. Start putting positive stuff in. Mm -hmm. So it's not as a matter of what to take. It's a matter of what to stop doing, what to get rid of. And uh, that's more important because – you, you can't put out a fire with water if you're pouring gasoline on the fire at the same time. And that's what people keep doing. Very true. So it, the, the most important thing is to realize what to stop doing. And it, it's, be, it's better, you know, sometimes when people like, you know, there's going to be an economy, bad economy uh, issues coming up pretty soon. And people are going to, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs and all that. But that's sometimes the best thing for people because that forces them to go and find something that they like more, that they love more, that that's them, you know. So a lot of people will say, 
you know, losing their job, getting cancer, all that stuff is the best thing that ever happened to them because it forced them to change their life and do things that were better for them. Yeah. And yeah, they're, they're kicking and screaming and going, ah, oh, this is bad. I'm a victim. But after you're through it, a lot of times it really forces you to look at your life and, re and rethink everything that you've been, the path you've been heading down. And maybe you realize that that's not the right, that's not a happy path. I want to go down that path. And I did that many times where I said, I'm just going to give up everything I have. I have nothing. I don't care. I'm starting over. And almost every single time I ended up somewhere that was 10 times better than where I was because I gave up everything I had. So my, I guess my message is to people, don't worry about the bad times, whatever, losing everything. Mm -hmm. That might be the best thing for you. Start over, do, and this time when you start getting stuff, accumulating things, make sure it's only good stuff that's coming in your life. Good food, good people, good ideas, and just start, you know, the, if you don't have, if you don't have a house, if you don't have a car, if you don't have, then you don't have to pay for those things. You have less <laughs> bills to pay. You know, there's always a way to, you'll always be taken care of. That's one thing I realized, you'll always be taken care of. You'll always have somehow a roof over your head. You'll always have some kind of food. Might not be gourmet, but you'll have something. You know, you got to start somewhere. And then you just build your way up, but in the right direction next time. And... You know, pretty soon everybody can be having the good life. If if they, the only people that are really doing good in life are the ones that are doing what they love doing. Yeah, very true. You very know, true. so sooner you, you realize that, the sooner you get on doing what you're here for, what you're meant for, no matter what the sacrifices are, mm -hmm. the sooner the world can be better because now you have something to offer the world of value yeah. rather than just being a number that's just a cog in a wheel. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think I think yeah. the world the world needs real value because there's too many things out there today that don't really have value, um, yeah. and and you know even people certain celebrities they, they they sort of hype them up even some of these sports players they hype them up so much uh, yeah. when there's really no value there. Um, yeah. And we need to, I think maybe this moment of reflection for everybody is is this a moment where we can really reflect on what real value is and what really does count in life. And as you said, it's a good time to reinvent yourself. And one good place to start is with your body. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Marcus, for being on BizJet TV. And uh, we'll catch up with you again in the future. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Okay, so I'm sure you enjoyed that. I'm sure you're curious now into what other health advice Marcus has for you. Uh, Marcus does a series of videos on his YouTube channel. Very informative. Uh, shows you recipes you can make in your kitchen. Um, your health advice, also check into his products. Uh, so a great resource, we'll be providing you a link coming up shortly here to his YouTube channel. And then from there, you can go on and you've seen the link also on this episode to Marcus's website where you can find out more about him. So that's all from me here on Visit TV. I hope you enjoyed this episode a bit different than usual, but I thought, you know, healthy travel, I think is something that um, isn't talked about and needs to be talked about. There's too much scaremongering going on right now we need to focus on health focus on what we can do to build a strong immune system and to be strong so that when we do you know when this travel ban has been lifted and we can go back out and travel and travel around the world and fly our jets and uh, and um, fly around to do business and vacationing with your family and that uh, that we can do it healthily and as marcus said he's not too worried about you know eating in an airport a restaurant or going on airplanes because he's built himself a strong immune system and you saw what he looked like when he was 29 what he looks like now uh, Marcus is actually 55 now so a bit older than the photo I showed you earlier so he's doing really well and that's why I brought him on on this episode instead of bringing in a doctor which very often enough aren't, aren't very healthy um, I thought I'd bring somebody on that's actually been out there turned their life around done a lot of research and above all produced results and results that stick and I think that is really, really important. So comment below, let me know what you thought of this episode. And remember to subscribe to this channel, check into the other videos and the playlist coming up shortly about more episodes here on BizJet TV. And that's all from Fabrizio Farley on BizJet TV. And I'll see you on the next one.